Okay, so after load, we said varies inversely with stroke volume and cardiac output. So they vary in opposite <coughs> ways. Um, what after load is, is it's essentially how much force it takes to open the semilunar valves and eject blood from the heart. Okay, so if you think about it, like here's my heart, right? My ventricles are where I'm going to be ejecting blood. So if you look at my left ventricle, I eject blood out through my aorta. And at the bottom of the aorta, I have a semilunar valve. Remember, in the very beginning of ventricular systole, I can't open that valve yet. And you know, it starts to contract, right? And I start to generate pressure. But there's some pressure in here. Blood pressure, essentially, right? The pressure of the blood in this vessel is pushing down on that valve. So my ventricle has to create enough force to overcome that pressure in order to push open this valve and eject blood. That's the afterload. How much force it takes to open that is the afterload. So you can imagine if it takes more force to open this, if afterload goes up and I have to push harder to open it, then I'm gonna have less force left over to actually push the blood. Right, because I spent most of my force just trying to open the valve. Not very much is left over to actually push the blood through the body. So as afterload goes up, the amount of as the amount of tension in this vessel goes up, stroke volume and cardiac output go down. So what could increase afterload? Hypertension. Um, what's hypertension? High blood pressure. High blood pressure. Right, an increase in blood pressure. Again, that's literally the pressure that's in these vessels. So if the pressure that's in these vessels is really high, it's hard to push against that, right, to open up my valves. Um, vasoconstriction goes right kind of in line with that. Vasoconstriction is just um, when the diameter of the vessel gets smaller. Okay, and again, that's, that's directly related because when the vessel gets smaller, there's more pressure in it. Okay, and it's harder to push against it. Okay, but either one of those things will increase afterload. Again, as we increase afterload, um, stroke volume goes down and cardiac output therefore also goes down. So we kind of we kind of covered oops, where am I going? We covered a lot here really quickly. These two slides just kind of summarize all of it. Um, again, cardiac output is just how much blood we pump, right? That's heart rate times stroke volume. If I don't give you stroke volume, you can use EBV and ESV to calculate it. Okay? Um, we can adjust heart rate if we want to adjust how much blood we're pumping, or we can adjust stroke volume if we want to adjust how much blood we're pumping. If we're going to adjust heart rate, we can adjust the autonomic nervous system. Right? We have the sympathetic nervous system that utilizes norepinephrine in order to increase heart rate, which would increase cardiac output. The parasympathetic nervous system utilizes acetylcholine to decrease heart rate, which would decrease cardiac output. When we're exercising, the sympathetic dominates. When we're resting, the parasympathetic dominates. Um, how much blood that coming back to the heart or venous return is also going to affect our heart rate because we have stretch receptors in the atria. The more blood we cram in, the more the atria stretches, the more it knows it needs to push things forward more. So if we stimulate those stretch receptors, um, they're gonna go send a signal up to the cardioacceleratory center, right? That stimulates the sympathetic neurons to release norepinephrine, which increases the heart rate. Again, we've got more going into the heart, the heart speeds up to get rid of it so that we even it out and we don't have that backlog of blood anymore. We can also adjust stroke volume by adjusting preload, contractility, and afterload. Preload, remember, is just how much the ventricle stretches, right? How much we actually put in the ventricle while it's at rest and filling up. It's end diastolic volume. As we increase the end diastolic volume, we increase the preload. It stretches more, and just like the rubber band, those elastic components, um, they, they, what's the word? Snap. They snap harder when you stretch them further, right? So as we increase the preload, it snaps harder, it pumps more out. We increase stroke volume, it increase cardiac output. Contractility is affected by the sympathetic nervous system um, via both epi and norepi. Epi and norepi go to the heart, tell it to contract harder, that increases stroke volume, increases cardiac output. After <coughs> is the opposite. 
Afterload, remember, is like the pressure in the vessel. That's how much you have to overcome in order to move forward. So the more afterload, the lower your stroke volume, the lower your cardiac output. They, they vary inversely. That was a really fast ending. Is that okay? 